Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Bob, Trade Genius, the 22nd of April. And um, so what a way to end the week. The market was uh, pretty tough shape here. So let me um, talk it through with you guys. And so on March 29th, we had um, our latest high that got taken over. And so this put us in a situation now where we had our ultimate high at the beginning of January of 2022. And now we made a basically a, a lower high. And now we're coming down onto the lows that we put in at the middle of March. And so the way these bars are falling right now, it looks pretty good that we're going to come down to test mm-hmm. You know, at the very least, we're going to test the 4217 area, 415 on SPY. That may hold it, but if we don't hold it there, we're likely to go down to 4100 on on the S&P, which puts us around 409, 408 on SPY. But it brings us a problem. So once we get there... We've really painted an inverse cup and handle. And with that inverse cup and handle now, it could push us down potentially, potentially to 3,600 on ES, 360 on SPY. And that brings us back to a measure move that we put together a long time ago last year, where if the market rolled over, it was going to probably bottom out in that area. So that's... That's a distinct possibility. And so you have to be really, really careful here with your positions. You know, obviously your long-term stuff, it's your long-term stuff, but it's no time for heroes. Now we'll probably get some bounces along the way there between now and the um, uh, Fed meeting on February 3rd and March, May 3rd and 4th. Now we have a put call ratio of 1.3 right now. So I could see... Monday, give us a really strong push down, okay, kind of a scare the children move. And then from that move, get some sort of bounce into next week. And then depending on what the Fed does, either we've got the the bottom covered and we made a higher low or pushing through. And I think well then the floor will come out of the market. You know, we're dealing with a couple things now. The price of the things that the Fed is most concerned with, they have the least ability to resolve. So you ever hear of inelastic demand to price? Well, we have it. Healthcare is subsidized by the government. So I don't see healthcare costs falling in an environment where people are getting older. Food prices are outside the government's control too. Okay. <clears throat> Fertilizer prices are high. They're going to put less in the ground. You know, we have wars in certain places. We have droughts and floods in others. And look at the cold we're having in the Northeast and in North America this year, too. So we may have some shortened growing seasons. So food they can't touch. Okay, rent. Interest rates are going up. Hey, interest rates are going up. But what we've been hearing is that because all this money that people have, they're going to buy these properties out. They're not taking interest rate loans. They're just paying cash for them. So rents are going to stay elevated. Okay. And the last thing is energy. And I'm going to show you that chart right now. So you have energy that has to make a decision here. And so I drew this chart for those that are just looking at this and can't, I mean, listening, but can't see it. We have, um, basically a descending triangle forming, or we have a flag. <laughs> so it's one of those situations where we have, a, we have basically have support at $95 a barrel, but we have the high, we have lows, excuse me, highs coming in lower and lower and lower each time. And so if the 95 breaks again, and let's put that in crayon. So between 93 and $95, it brings $60 into play. Now, that $60 that comes into play 
and I'll show you this chart for people that are looking. It takes us all the way back to the move that started in December of 2020, 2021, excuse me. Can you imagine oil was at $60, $60, not six months ago. So it has doubled in six months, okay? Ukrainian war didn't start in December. So this is the ramp job that we got in oil and energy, and it's it's staying persistently high. If we break over this uh, downtrend line that we have here, oil's going back to potentially $127 a barrel. The Fed will be fit to be tied. They were not going to be able to, they can destroy demand all they want with higher interest rates. But if you don't have the supply and people are running into it as protection from from government spending, we got the worst of all possible worlds coming at us. And so that's what we're looking at. So, and if oil does go up, SPY definitely will fall. And so that puts us as to what the heck's happened to energy besides oil this week, right? So, you know, CCJ and the uraniums got slammed, coal got slammed, okay? So, you know, what do we do about that? Well, you know, those are still great plays. And so you need to, you know, look for your dips to buy because they're still dip buyable. You know, if you look at something like CCJ, look, it just made a high. So it's pulling back. Anything above $24 on CCJ is still considered an uptrend. Okay. So these things happen when you have these big moves like this. You have to expect these big drawdowns. You know, I just look to buy dips, sell calls against it. And work it that way. Now, more problematically, you probably saw in the news yesterday, Mexico is going to nationalize their lithium mines. So that puts us in a situation where um, you have to start being careful about where you own your miners. Okay. So the United States, there's only one mine and one lithium mine, and that's uh, Lithium Americas Corporation out of Nevada. I expect to see prices and these mines gain value when American investors and Western investors are going to start getting knocked out of some of these countries that are nationalizing their mines and not letting people profit from it. The government's getting, you know, they want their, they want their take now. They want their VIG. And so you even notice the United States that he'll open drilling to, on public lands, but they raised the royalty to 19%. So you're going to start seeing that with other things. My only concern is I have AG, silver miner in Mexico. Are they going to try to do that too with those miners? So we'll have to um, keep an eye on that. Hecla is US based, so I'll have Hecla, but I may have to shift everything over to that stock instead of AG, which is a shame because I like AG a lot. But that's what we're dealing with now, guys. So it's a little bit nerve wracking. LAC is down at support at $27. Obviously, if it breaks that support, uh, then it's going to fall another 10%, okay, which just brings it back to where it was in February. But if this renewable push continues, and there's no reason why it won't with all the legislation in place, is that's going to be a good place to own LAC. I have it in my IRA. I'm holding for the long term. I'm looking forward to being in the 50s by July. We'll see if I'm right. But that's kind of where we are with that. And so BTU on the coal side, they don't make enough coal in the world as well. And so all the energy names are good. Now, my only caveat is if oil falls out of the bottom at 93 to 95, then that changes the dynamics of everything. But then we'll have a different problem. We're probably going to be going into a bit of deflation. And when that happens, you're going to want to own TLT. I already bought it. I'm, I'm in, in, um, in position here. For the turnaround in the 10-year rate, okay, this is going to be unsustainable for them to continue to push this thing up. 3% is is basically the ceiling, <clears throat> in my view. And we're going to look for TLT to, um, I mean, the 10-year to start coming down from there. But if oil rolls over, it's going to give us the deflationary sniff. That means the Fed's going to back off. People are going to run into, into, uh, into bonds again. And in 2008, when the market crashed, TLT doubled. So just FYI on that. And the last thing I'll share with you now is that I didn't take advantage of UBIX this week. I wasn't sure if they're going to trend this thing down over the last two days. And so um, if you want to trade this is that, um, you know, obviously it went from $13 to $19 as a 50% move. 
but it works in reverse too. So if we get any kind of any kind of pullback from volatility in the market, this thing will get crushed pretty hard. You look at some UVIX puts or UVXY puts, or you can go with SVIX or SVXY for a trade because this UVIX is double the volatility move. And how you check on that is you look at the VVIX, VVIX against the VIX. When that ratio comes back into alignment, then you're in a position now where they're going to start pushing volatility down. Typically, next week probably won't be a good week for this, but going into the Fed meeting, volatility usually falls afterward because we have a known event versus an unknown event. So that's kind of where we are with everything. So no time for heroes. It's not fun when this happens. You just got to deal with it. And, uh, you know, we caught a SARC trade. I'm in TLT. You know, this is another way you're going to trade it. I don't think this is the big down move yet. I think they'll probably try to pop it one more time in the market. And then my fear is that we'll have a bit of an Alzheimer's market where we just drift down over the course of the next 18 months. And that's going to highly depend on whether or not the Biden administration pushes us into a recession. So with that, have a good weekend. I'll try to do some other stuff this weekend, some more podcasts, uh, get a chance to look at some charts, see if we can find some opportunities. Thanks for listening. Guys, have a great weekend. Bye-bye.